What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie, and today I'd like to start discussing and reviewing and slightly complaining about um, the apostrophe 50th anniversary released by uh, uh, the Frank Zappa estate, whoever. It's not the estate that's running it. It's like United, Universal Music Group through, through Zappa. Uh, but anyways, it's the latest release. Uh, I'm going to talk about the five CD set. Um, of the 50th anniversary edition, but I'm going to do it one disc at a time, uh, mainly because I don't really want to mix the bitter or the complaining with the sweet, um, despite the fact that my coffee says that I like to do otherwise. Um, yeah, we're going to go one disc at a time. Um, I'm listening to it one disc at a time. I just listened to the first disc. Uh, I just finished it minutes ago. So now I have thoughts on that before I move on to the other ones, which I'm pretty, pretty excited about. Um, prior to the announcing of the release of this apostrophe disc, I was assuming there would not be a 50th anniversary apostrophe release. Um, they had a series called Project Object that the Zappa Family Trust was doing, which was like an in-depth look at certain albums. Um, they did Reuben and the Jets was one of them. Um, Lumpy Money, which was like a lumpy gravy, we're only in it for the money, uh, the making of Freak Out. Um, and this was the fourth, uh, the crux of the biscuit came out in 2016. That was sort of their in-depth look at apostrophe. And it felt like it was scraping the barrel at the time. Um, there was an interesting, probably the highlight of it was this really nice 20 minute version of Don't Eat the Yellow Snow from early 70s, which was pretty fantastic. Um, some good studio jams that eventually became apostrophe or, you know, material on apostrophe. But for the most part, it kind of felt like it was scraping the barrel, the bottom of the barrel, even maybe the sides of the barrel, maybe the lid. I don't know. A lot of like just outtakes and alternate takes and basic tracks and stuff like that. So, after Overnight Sensation was released and there was a lot of talk like, will Apostrophe be next? I was like, no, why would they do that? They're, they've already done it. Well, they did it. Um, and the first disc is essentially the entirety, the entirety, entirety, entirety? Why does that sound so weird? Is essentially the Apostrophe part of it. Uh, the other four discs that follow are two live shows from early 74 and late 74, um, which... I'm super excited about. I've uh, I've heard a sort of bootleg version of one of them, which is spectacular. I've heard shows, haven't heard the first one from early 74, but I've heard shows from that tour, which are fantastic. And so this comes out, disc one. It, it's essentially the only one that's solely focused on apostrophe. Um, the first nine tracks are the album. Um, it is remastered for 2024. I can't say I ever really had a problem with the original mix or the original mastering. So sounds good. Never thought it sounded bad. Um, it's still a pretty interesting, fun album. Um, side A is the Don't Eat the Yellow Snow Suite and then Cosmic Debris. And it gets a perfect five songs. Um, Don't Eat the Yellow Snow, pretty fantastic. Uh, Nanu grabs it, great studio guitar playing. San Alfonso's Pancake Breakfast, one of my favorite 40 seconds of music ever, that really fast-paced part in the middle. Father Oblivion, so many awesome little different parts. Somehow becomes a little bit better live and extend it out just a little bit and then go into uh, Rolo in 79. Um, and then we get a pretty good Cosmic Debris, a nice studio Cosmic Debris. Fun song, works on this album. Nice guitar solo by Frank. Um, side A is pretty strong. Side B for me has always been a little more hit and miss. Extra, eccentrifugal. I've never been able to say that word. Eccentrifugal, eccentrifugal force, eccentrifugal force. Okay song, interesting little ditty. Um, apostrophe has been something I've never gotten into. Um, I think I didn't like the mix on the original one. And there's a unedited master later on on this disc that I'm finally for the first time going to go over the top and praise apostrophe. Um, but it's a jam, a studio jam with Jack Bruce. I don't know. It never really worked for me. I always thought it felt, I don't know. It just felt like a single note idea and then they jammed it and it just wasn't much to it. Um, there's some live versions, especially from like mid 74 that are kind of good, but for the most part, it's a song that I thought it just, 
it never did anything for me. I know some people love it. I I have never loved it. Then we have Uncle Remus, flat out classic track, flat out classic track, flat out classic track. Great, great lyrics, great guitar solo, great backing vocals, great piano by George Duke. Um, we used to do that back in high school. We did it once, twice, I think. Uh, we'd go up to shows at like the Palladium or up on Sunset Strip. And then we'd drive, you'd go take the 405 and you'd drive through uh, down Sunset. You'd go through like Beverly Hills and they all had long jockeys on their lawns. And there were a couple nights, I think probably after the shows when we were a little bit uh, more amped up, we'd we'd run over and knock the little jockeys over just, just for the fun of it, um, inspired by Frank. Um, and then Stinkfoot, which a great version of Stinkfoot, a great version. We get this sort of longer ending that he never did live, the awesome poodle bites, the poodle chews, that little part. Is that from this song? Yeah, that is. Um, I'm, I'm mixing songs up probably. Um, but yeah, just a really solid, fun um, album. I don't think it's one of his like absolute best. I know some people love it. Um, it's got its moments. I think the remaster doesn't hurt it. So that's what you get to start off. You get the album apostrophe, which people already have. Then you get the bonus tracks. And here's where things kind of go wrong for me. You get Don't Eat the Yellow Snow, basic tracks, alternate track. This was released on Crux of the Biscuit. Same exact thing. You get Nanook Rubs It, basic tracks outtake. This was released on Crux of the Biscuit. You get Nanook Rubs It, session outtake. This was released on Crux of the Biscuit. There's not much to it. They're basic tracks. You just heard the song with the full everything. I'm not sure this is necessary, especially when you now re-release the same arguably unnecessary thing twice. Um, you get Cosmic Debris, Debris, basic tracks, take three. This was released on Crux of the Biscuit. Um, extra Eccentric Fugal Force, Oof, the mix outtake. Pretty sure this is the same one that was on Crux of the Biscuit, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, it is. Um, you get um, Apostrophe, Mix Outtake. This was on Crux of the Biscuit. Um, you get Uncle Remus, Mix Outtake. This was on Crux of the Biscuit. Like, I don't... I think I read somewhere that you can't get Crux of the Biscuit anymore, that it's not in production anymore. But it is on streaming, so it is out there. It is available. You might be able to find like a digital download of it. But I don't understand like why they re-released one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tracks in order to justify an apostrophe 50th anniversary release. Maybe they were just not happy with the Crux of the Biscuit, but Crux of the Biscuit has that monster live uh, don't you don't eat the yellow snow on it. That's pretty fantastic. So I don't know. It, it's interesting. But we got two more tracks, which are unreleased previous to this. Uh, one of them is my favorite thing by far on this. It is an 11 minute version of Apostrophe, uh, an unedited master 2024 mix. This is amazing. This sounds like a mindless, fun, everybody having a good time studio jam. Uh, there is a moment, it's like probably in the second half of it, around the seven, eight minute mark, where Frank just starts playing, no, 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 over and over and over and over on the guitar. And then Bruce starts like doing it. And then they start like tweaking that little riff and kind of toying with it in slight variations. And they're just like, they're just like playing around and having fun. And it doesn't seem like they're going anywhere. doesn't seem like there's any purpose to it. It just seems like a bunch of guys in the studio, jamming, having an amazing time. Like this is by far the most I've ever, ever enjoyed Apostrophe and all my times listening to it, other than like a live mid-74 one, which just because Fowler, Tom Fowler on bass. Um, absolutely fantastic. I think it's the highlight of this first disc. Not sure it justifies its release, um, but yeah. Really, really choice stuff. Really good. Um, that's the second to last track on here. And then the next track is an Uncle Remus piano and vocal mix, which is just nice to hear, 2024, because it's it's a great song. This is just a simplistic version of it, piano and vocals. Um, but, you know, a, a, a nice, sweet, melodic, sing-along way to end. And this, 
unnecessary first disc. Like I just, I mean, maybe I understand the need to like remaster the original apostrophe, but I can't say it was, it sounded bad to begin with. I've always enjoyed the sound on that album. I think it's always been a great headphone album. Um, it's still a great headphone album. But to have seven tracks you've already released and is the justification that you can no longer get Crux of the Biscuit? Well, just re-release Crux of the Biscuit. I don't know. Or pair them. Maybe release just a double CD set that is Crux of the Biscuit and then the remaster of Apostrophe with this, this jam at the end. I don't know. Um, and then you can release the concerts separately and sell them cheaper, um, which I'm super excited to get to. But yeah, that's all I got. It's some rambling about the first disc. I think it is a disappointing start. It is disappointing. To, disappointing disc. It's a disc appointing disc. It's disappointing to hear these things over again. Um, I stand by what I said. There was no need to re-release Apostrophe in a 50th anniversary. This does seem like it's 50th anniversary. Let's take the chance on it and make some more money. Um, though, after I hear the two concerts, I'm going to completely defend this. But yeah, I, I, I wouldn't get this for disc one. That's, that's not why you get this box set. And if you can find Crux of the Biscuit and you are interested in hearing those seven, get Crux of the Biscuit because I have a review elsewhere on this channel about that album. Um, it does have, um, opens up with Cosmic Debris, which I think is a great opener. You got a, a version of Down into Do, which isn't on the apostrophe thing. Um, you got that monster live Don't Eat the Yellow Snow, which is fantastic. You got a couple other interesting things, but yeah. That's it. Disc one, somewhat of a disappointment. So far, we're not off to a good start. But, but next, we go to March of 1974 with a show, a band that we so far have nothing officially released from. And, and now we, we get something, something pretty juicy. So I'm excited uh, to get into that. Uh, probably probably going to start listening to that as soon as I upload this. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Let me know your thoughts on the first disc. Uh, we'll get on to the second disc soon. But yeah, try to be as optimistic as possible and positive as possible about the, the Zappa releases. But so far, this one is it's a bitter pill to swallow a little bit. Kind of disappointed. But uh, on to what I know will be good stuff. Subscribe, like, share, comment. Thank you for your time. Sorry for wasting your time just complaining about this. But got to be honest. Um, peace. Talk to you later.